Released in early 2015, Ori and the Blind Forest quickly became one of my favorite exploration-driven platformers of all time, with a perfect blend of brilliant level design, challenging navigation, and a beautiful presentation. So I was excited when a sequel, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, was announced back at E3 2017. Little did I realize the wait would be so long, but at last, Will of the Wisps has emerged, and the result is most excellent. This follow-up offers more of what I loved about the original, but with plenty of changes and improvements along the way. Yet after spending time with the game, it quickly became apparent that there are some new technical hiccups as well that were not a problem with the original. So today, we're going to check out the game's visuals, discuss the new effects, talk about the game itself, and of course, examine the troublesome performance. So, let's jump in. Ori and the Will of the Wisps follows up from the original game. It's still a 2D Metroidvania-style platformer with a focus on challenging traversal and beautiful environments. It also still utilizes the Unity engine to achieve its results. While Ori is a 2D game at heart, the visuals offer a sense of depth that really bring the players into the world. The camera reveals a world created from a large number of bespoke layers that all parallax with one another, creating the illusion of a three-dimensional world. This is mixed with actual 3D objects that are peppered throughout the scene and sometimes used to dramatic effect to create sequences such as this. It's an interesting fusion between 2D and 3D visuals. Compared to Blind Forest, the sequel offers several visual improvements that help create a livelier, more beautiful world. Firstly, the sheer volume of objects and detail within the world has been increased to the point where nearly every scene could stand alone as a painting. The artistry created by the dev team here is simply superb. Every scene is beautiful to behold, and there's never a moment when the game does not look amazing. But where it has evolved lies in its interactivity, or perhaps reactivity. As you move across the world, nearly everything now reacts to the player and enemies around you. Grass blows, wooden structures shudder, and everything else behaves as you might expect. Everything you do has some impact on an element of the world. Couple this with the remarkable animation work, and you have a game that just feels more lively than the original, which is still beautiful in its own right. Then there's the dynamic lighting. The artists ensure that every surface can now receive dynamic lights, which further contributes to its dynamic presentation. It's beautifully lit and just bursting with color. They've also implemented various new visual effects, such as a nice bokeh depth of field, which adds depth to the world, along with optional motion blur to accentuate fast actions. Everything is clearly derived from work done in the first game, but Will of the Wisps amps everything up to the next level. Things such as the interactive water mesh, which moves and splashes around as the player jumps through it, are retained from Ori, but further enhanced. You'll see these types of improvements throughout the game. In terms of technical features, image quality receives a boost with native support for Xbox One X, thanks to higher resolution rendering. Now, this game sort of flies in the face of pixel counting with its soft 2D art, however. It is clear from the various 3D objects in the world, however, that Xbox One X definitely renders at a higher resolution than the base Xbox One, which seems to fall below 1080p with additional blur and shimmer on such objects. It does appear as if Xbox One is more around 900p or so, while Xbox One X is closer to 4K. It's rather difficult to get a precise pixel count on this game due to the art design and focus on 2D assets. Now, if we compare the two versions side by side, well, the resolution difference becomes evident. The Xbox One X version features noticeably cleaner and smoother lines all around. Look closely at the characters and you'll notice additional noise and pixelation here on the Xbox One S.
Now, of course, the 2D artwork looks roughly the same, though as things zoom out, you do lose some detail on Xbox One S, of course, but really, it's just these 3D objects that suffer the most. None of this is entirely surprising, honestly, but still, both versions do look great, but it's clear that Xbox One X has the advantage overall, again, as you would expect. In addition, HDR support has been added this time, which increases the dynamic range, allowing for bright highlights and more nuanced shadow. Another nice improvement over the original game. Will of the Wisps even supports Dolby Atmos, which is used to build atmosphere around the player with water, wind, and other environmental effects playing through the height channels. It sounds excellent. So yes, the presentation is superb, and that's not even touching on the phenomenal soundtrack from Gareth Coker. It's every bit as powerful as the original game, and truly injects emotion into the experience. It's fantastic stuff and absolutely central to the game's experience. So at this point, everything sounds pretty good, right? Well, that's the thing. While so much of the game is beautifully crafted, Will of the Wisps falls short in one key area, performance. When it comes to a 2D action platformer game, holding a steady frame rate is absolutely critical in my book. You want to be at 60 frames per second, and dips should be minimal. With the original Ori, this was not a problem, and even on the base Xbox One, the frame rate was steady. Heck, the same is true of the Switch port that was released much later. I long held Ori as an example of a Unity game done right that managed to sidestep many of the pitfalls that many other Unity games fell into. With Will of the Wisps, however, things have kind of changed. I was initially concerned by the state of things when I played an early demo back at E3 2018. The performance wasn't great, but the game was still a ways off, and you cannot pass judgment based on an early in-development build. Naturally, I expected most of these issues to be ironed out in the final game. It only made sense to me. Fast forward to, well, this past week, I got my hands on the final game and immediately knew something was up. Yet, there was still a day one patch in the works, so I waited to test performance for that, since it's what everyone would be playing at launch. Unfortunately, my fears came true. While Will of the Wisps is certainly very playable and still extremely enjoyable in its own right, there are simply too many areas where the performance falls short. It just isn't as smooth as the original game. Now, before we continue, we have heard from the developers that they are continuing to work on this and have other patches in the works to correct performance, but we'll have to wait and see. These are the problems as they stand. Let me explain. While playing the game, whether simply exploring or engaging enemies, the game tends to exhibit a number of issues. Firstly, it drops frames, leading to reduced fluidity. This is a problem for a game with a lot of lateral movement of the camera, as it reduces the feeling of smooth scrolling as you explore the environment. In some areas, it's perfectly okay. But in others, such as this, the frame rate really seems to struggle, which I found somewhat puzzling. This is then coupled with an adaptive V-Sync. In an attempt to minimize Judder, V-Sync is dropped at points, leading to torn frames along the upper portion of the image. It's subtle enough that it doesn't detract too much from the image, but it definitely is there if you know where to look. This area in particular really exhibits some serious problems with dips well below the target 60 frames per second. It's honestly rather disappointing for me. This is all mixed with occasional stutters where the game seems to pause here and there for I.O. access. So what's going on here? 
While the new visual adjustments are certainly nice, from the outside it's difficult to see exactly why the game is suffering from performance issues in comparison to the original game. Perhaps the team is simply pushed beyond the capabilities of the hardware? From the outside, it's kind of impossible to say. In general though, it's honestly not quite as bad as it may seem based on the results here, at least on Xbox One X. Certain areas really struggle to run well, but others are not so bad. It's just unfortunate that it's so variable. If you're running on the Xbox One S or base Xbox One, however, things are a lot worse. Keep in mind that the original Ori was designed specifically for that original Xbox One, so to see such a massive loss in performance is a bit disappointing. Basically, the frame rate is now much lower than Xbox One X on average, with dips as low as 28 frames per second in some scenes. Honestly, it just isn't where I would have liked. So really, that's kind of the performance situation right now. Well, almost. I also tested the game using the 120Hz output option on Xbox One X, just out of curiosity, and while the performance still drops, screen tearing is eliminated. It looks somewhat different as a result. It's tough to say if it's better or worse, but it's at least worth sampling just to see what you think. While we're on the topic of performance, I also wanted to mention loading. I found the loading times to be slightly more bothersome this time around compared to the original game. In Blind Forest, spawning after death was basically instantaneous, you just pop right back into the world, and it was great for retrying those challenging sequences. Now for the sequel, loading isn't necessarily lengthy per se, but there is a noticeable pause after each death that was not present in that first game. It's not a huge deal necessarily, but it's definitely something I noticed. So what's the solution to the loading and indeed performance issues? Well, logically, the PC version should solve many of these problems, but I also ran into issues there specifically with the Windows Store version. Since I had the game on Xbox, I was also entitled to download the Windows Store version, but for unknown reasons, it did not work, and I didn't have time to figure out why exactly that was the case. It just wouldn't download. So at this point, at least on the Xbox side, the technical results are somewhat mixed. The game is beautiful to behold, but it has performance issues. I will be keeping an eye out for future patches in hopes that some of these things can be addressed, so keep an eye on my Twitter if you're interested to know more. If I see any dramatic improvements, I'll be sure to mention it there at least. And I certainly hope it can be fixed, as the core game itself is sublime. Like the original, I feel that Ori really elevates the Metroidvania genre to new heights by focusing on navigational challenges in a big way. One of the complaints I've always had with the style of the game is that traversal is often too easy. Moving from one side of the world to the other is typically only made challenging by the enemies rather than the level design itself. Ori succeeds by focusing heavily on level design as opposed to combat, though it does have some decent combat as well. The world itself is beautifully laid out, and the simple act of moving through it is an absolute joy. Many of the abilities you unlock along the way then simply expand your ability to traverse, enabling players to reach higher heights and deeper depths. It's this potent mix of challenging platform action, an emotional soundtrack, and gorgeous visuals that result in a game that pleases from all angles. It's a game that combines everything that's great about the medium of video games, which is why it's so critical to see these performance issues solved in a patch. It also makes me wonder about the future of the game on other platforms. The original Ori was ported to Switch, and it's a great port, but based on what we're seeing here with the sequel, the game is a lot more demanding than that original title, so that makes me wonder if a Switch port is even feasible. At least a Switch port at 60 frames per second. So that's pretty much it. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a fantastic game with a few problems, but even still, it's absolutely worth playing. That is of course going to do it for this video then. If you enjoyed it, as always, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, and ring the bell while also following us over on Twitter. And until next time, this is John, signing off. <laughs>